Greetings, fellow Whovians. This is Brett from the Dr. Lambert podcast, and I am coming to you with this irregular cold open to the podcast to set something up, it, which was recorded. Now, we have already recorded the August reviews from 2023 for Big Finish, and that is going to come out in the following week. We're getting ready to do the September reviews in a little bit as well, too. This podcast was always meant to be something that I was going to do solo so that we can get something out every single Sunday to you, the listeners, because, you know, I think it is great to be consistent and to give something new and exciting and hopefully filled with, uh, you know, discussion and debate. However, a strange occurrence happened while recording this episode. I was initially going to do a top 20 list of the top 20, you know, as ranked by three different lists, uh, best Doctor Who TV episodes, and kind of crit criticize or critique the list. Uh, then it turned into a Doctor Who doomsday reacting to the most recent Big Finish slash BBC slash Doctor Who multimedia crossover that has been in full swing, or I guess you could say partial swing, since July of 2023. And I was going to just peel back some of the layers and discuss certain aspects and elements of it, and then it is going to lead us into a more you know grander podcast, which was probably going to come out in, in the following weeks. However, um, something weird happened while I was recording this podcast. There is a throwaway line that actually set a couple things up in motion. So in the near future, we are going to be recording and breaking down the unusual, peculiar thing, which is <laughs> not Time Lord Victorious. Why did my brain think Time Lord Victorious? Uh, Doctor Who Doomsday. And the events that, you know, all of the things that consist of it, but all of the unusual things that have followed. And there's some good, there's some bad, and there's some ugly. And I will say there is some weird. And I'm going to now turn the time over to what was supposed to be just a, you know, 30 minute podcast. And, and, and then I, I'll probably come in at the end and, do something to set certain things up in the future. And then, yeah, uh, please email the show, tweet the show, email the show at alambra audio at gmail.com. That is A L H M B R A audio at gmail.com. You can tweet the show at alambra podcast. DMs are open. So now I know I'm like three minutes or so in. Here is the actual introduction and whatnot to the Dr. Who Alambra podcast. Episode 295. The Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Real Doctor Who fans with real Doctor Who opinions. Hello and welcome to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast, episode number 295 of the podcast. This is a doomsday filled episode. Yes, when doomsday arrives, you can count on the TARDIS for a timely escape or... Don't worry, it's doomsday, but the doctor's here to exterminate your troubles. All right, so I just chat, just typed into chat GPT to do a couple of doomsday puns because this is a doomsday special. Now, um, we will be talking in the near future with Liam and Legion regarding doomsday, but this is a solo edition, and I because I really want to break down this whole doomsday thing because it i i wasn't going to do this i actually had a already recorded podcast for episode 295 and doomsday um <laughs> the fantastically planned i can't believe i can't say that without giggling the fantastically planned um air tightness which is this multi-tiered or multi um what do i want to say um, across multiple genre, not genres, mediums. There we go. Thank you, brain. Uh, multimedia 
uh, thing revolving around Doom and her day, which obviously everybody cares about and nobody is complaining about. Oh, wait, that is actually backwards and incorrect. I mean, again, this thing. Okay, let's just get into it. So um, <laughs> this started um, early this morning. I woke up to a message in our group chat from Legion who basically said, because it, you know, it dropped, at least for me, early in the morning. And here is the breakdown. So I, let's see, just a second, uh, making fun of Liam for a second. All right, there we are. So, wait, nope, still making fun of Liam right there. All right, there we are. So I post, Liam's favorite Facebook group has an ad, admin post saying a polite warning, or in other words, a threat that the review thread is only to review the story and any other comments need go elsewhere. And Legion replied, yeah, this is not revolving around doomsday. This is not being received well. And here is the breakdown because it is glorious in its this whole ineptitude. And you can't blame Big Finish. It, it was probably forced upon them, but you can blame the cover art with a Paul McGann head that is kind of um, floating across where, not where his head should be or his neck should be, but kind of like off center from where that is. And then you have Doom, whose head is gigantic. You know, if she was a child, it would be like, oh, okay, you know, kids have gigantic heads compared to their body. But no, this is an assassin, supposedly. And this event is just horrible. And and I'm speaking uh, from somebody who has read a couple of different events in comics. And the interesting thing about events in comics is you have the main storyline, and then you have tie-in episodes. I think what they should have done is they should have had a main storyline going on and then have tie-in episodes uh, that you could listen to. But to make this doomsday thing or this event and the, in its inception, it was meant to constantly have all of these references going this way and that. So, it, you know, future event planning for the you know, RTD. I know you're listening. Thank you for downloading and subscribing. I do appreciate it. Thank you also, Jason A. Gillery, as well as Nick Briggs and all the other brain trusts at Big Finish for listening to this. I think if you are going to do a event, what you need to do is similarly to some of the events that is done in DC and Marvel Comics is you have the main event that is happening, whether it's, you know, Crisis on Infinite Earths or you have, you know, the most recent uh, spider Spider-Man, the dark web event that they did, where you have the main story taking place either in the event book or for the dark web for Spider-Man, it was happening all in the main Amazing Spider-Man series. And then there was tie-ins through Venom. There is tie-ins through this book. And I believe Miles Morales to some extent, maybe, I can't remember. No, no, no. There's a Golden Goblin book and then the Red Goblin book. and. I wanted to read it, but there's it's too event heavy. Going forward, there's this new event coming out at the end of 2023, 24 in Marvel, which is called Gang Wars, which is like vomiting into all of these not only brand new books, but also in ongoing stories. And the amount of things that you have to pick up for this event is so huge. And you know there's going to be one-shot issues here and there. So my uh, suggestion to Big Finish or the BBC, you know, whatever, if you're going to do an event, have a main storyline developed somewhere. Then you can have a tie-in uh, thing that, you know, can be referenced here or there, but it isn't necessary for the entire understanding. And I think it would go well. I think you'd be doing the fan and the fandom more of a service to make things less mandatory and a little bit more user-friendly depending on 
you know, whether, you know, my, my co-hosts are blind, whether they can get the material or not. I mean, again, Time Lord Victorious, a horrible, absolutely horrible uh, event that happened around the lockdown time. So um, this thing on the Big Finish listeners group, because, you know, they aren't uh, Gestapo and they, are, you know, they welcome um, people who have differing opinions. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That's wrong group. Uh, they don't. Um, after they posted the uh, cover art and saying Doomsday hour, Dying Hours is out now, comment below, please. Within the first, after the first one, uh, commented, said, yeah, I've been following this series. The only reason why I want it is for eight, but he's in the last episode. So I don't know, maybe I'll see. At which point an admin comes in and swoops in and says, just a polite warning, which it is not a polite warning. This is a threat. It says this post is for discussion and thoughts on the story. So anyone considering buying it can see others thoughts on the stories. If you're commentating to have to go about buying a series or to troll people, then your comment will be removed. If you want to comment on this series, I swear they updated this because this was different this from this morning from when I l- read it, but maybe it was, you know, I just barely had woken up. But so we get a threat after somebody saying that, you know, they were thinking about buying it, but then they changed their mind. Then we have somebody saying, I definitely want to Wait, oh, uh, by the way, I did laugh a face emoji to the admin. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm not going to be posting mean things. I'm just going to be laughing at them. So maybe I will get removed because I am on purpose avidly mocking the admin. Uh, somebody else comes in and swoops in and says, definitely want to wait until it appears in a future sale. Yeah, like 75% off, which w- they did with New Earth constantly for a long time. Then um, (laughs) we have um, somebody who I believe is associated with Big Finish say, oh, the other audio was surprisingly good. Never judge a release by its cover or the marketing or other tie-ins, etc. And so I'm like, all right, so the spin has begun. Then we have somebody who is not in the uh, Big Finish Writing Association, but when you hover over said person's uh, bio is writer, writer of science fiction, fantasy, and association. So this person has all the, I guess, right boxes to, I guess, suck up to Big Finish and whatnot to not dump on this in this group that has way too many Big Finish members in it. I mean, you can be a member of Big Finish and their writing staff, in all honesty. I'm not gatekeeping. But because of you cannot criticize fellow members of this Facebook group, and if they happen to write a horrible episode... Well, now you have broken one of the bylaws. So again, it's a sticky situation to comment in this group. So this writer, who has not done anything for Big Finish, but is a writer, says, I surprised myself by enjoying this series, including the comic strips. Did we read the same comic strips? Because I tell you, that first comic, I still have the second comic that I will eventually get around to. I just, ugh. I just don't feel like hating myself today. It says, um, the highlight has been the novel and the first Big Finish audio. Suck up much? Um, I didn't think it was for me at all, but yeah, it's been really fun. Well, of course, the writer uh, who is in a group that has fellow Big Finish writers would find that the writing is not an issue. However, we contrast that with the Big Finish Productions uh, Facebook page. And, oh, look, we have Liam that has uh, decided to jump into our comments. I will uh, get to his, but... uh... All right, so that was the podcast that initially, in the direction I was going in, I was interrupted by a phone call and kind of was stopped. 
but it was one of those happy accidents because, again, I'm not sure if you heard what I kind of suggested could happen, and I actually didn't believe it for a second. And then when it did happen, I was basically in complete awe. I was actually shaking because of just the oddity of everything, and it was actually surprising. It was an anger. It was more or less surprise and shock. So um, that being said, what are your thoughts, not only on just maybe what happened to me, which we will cover in episode 297, what are your thoughts on the podcast as a whole? We'd love to hear your thoughts, the good, the bad, the ugly. Again, I like the idea of having a Doctor Who talk radio podcast because I think that it's a lot better than just a everything is good in the world of Doctor Who or everything is, you know, doom and gloom. No pun intended for the whole doom thing. But uh, yeah, everything's not horrible. Everything's not great. I think there could be good spins and bad spins. And again, the constant uh, what if or where does the show go? I think that is super interesting. I think our podcast is very original and very unique in the Doctor Who universe because I've listened to many of them, and I think ours is the best. But again, would love to hear from you. Please email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A audio at gmail.com. Tweet the show. DMs are open. You can also reach me for the moment back at duckbomb89 because I changed that back because uh, I saw something about uh, UK PETA, and I wanted to, uh, what better... Uh, Twitter handle to try to troll UK PETA or just PETA with then with the Twitter handle of duckbomb89. So currently that's back to being a thing because I think it's funny. I'm probably on a list and that's probably not funny. I'm probably on multiple lists because of, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that being said, thanks again for downloading and listening. We do appreciate it. Now I'm going to, uh, you know, pivot over to what I was talking about before a phone call interrupted and I just kind of paused the podcast when it actually was going to delete it. But again, sometimes a, a broken clock is right twice a day and I happen to just coincidentally be right. So again, thanks for downloading and listening. And yeah, until next time, we will see you in time. It's it is so glorious. You know, we have a comment, you know, this whole thing has been a fiasco. And it says, wow, I, you know, and then, of course, you have somebody who is trying to defend and white knight who they got totally destroyed with the laughy face emojis, um, you know, because there's just like, well, if you don't have any interest in it, but you have strong opinions about it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, so yeah, I think that is, uh, you know, somebody has been taking their copium, uh, in, uh, I guess maybe overdosing it. And for all that concerns, um, as you know, I scroll down to this, it, you know, some people recognize that there is some detractors or whatever, but it's a celebration. And as fans, we are spoiled for choices and we should be celebrating every option. No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Not every like, not every single episode is something that should be celebrated. Not every single episode is something that we should be. You know, I feel as though if podcasting was a thing during the wilderness years, I think that a lot of the virgin novelizations would be massively criticized. And I think the fandom, I would love. I oh, that would be great if we could not go in with rose-tinted glasses, because I now feel as though when we look back at the wilderness years with the virgin novelizations or the missing adventures, I feel as though that there are some uh, issues or some books that people uh, rightfully say that this is not good. However, what I would love to hear and see in podcasting form is people, you know, in the mindset of the wilderness years during the, the 90s, and, you know, I guess even up to the, you know, TV movie or whatever, but to critically analyze and discuss and debate in podcast form, in, uh, you know, YouTube format, because I feel as though 
uh, opinions have been softened because the show came back in 2005 and feelings and criticisms have been softened and lifted because you know what? The show did come back. And you know what? Maybe the quality wasn't there, but you know what? At least it was something. And I feel as though that that's what you would, you would not get that. And so I do feel as though that we can criticize any offshoot because, you know, media consumption was a lot different. You kind of only did it by yourself or with a small group. Or if you're like me in the United States, you know, you would kind of do it only by yourself because, you know, there, the, the Doctor Who fandom was few and far between. And then, of course, you have the wilderness years where people kind of like what I did just kind of moved on with things. So I I think I disagree with that statement. I think that the wilderness years had good quality output, but also had faulty quality output. But we only want to slight a handful of stories where you could possibly even slight even more stories had it, you know, had we had this, you know, this, uh, what do I want to say? Had we had this kind of technology back then. So, you know, as I scroll through, I'm sitting there looking and, you know, people are like, yeah, the wilderness years was the best quality over quantity. We had virgin novelizations. We had Dr. Who magazine, comics, audios, VHS, DVD releases, classic stories, genuine fans who cared about the show, which I will, that's a really good summarization and selling point for the wilderness years. But again, it is looking back. Like, you know, the wilderness years, you had no idea when or if the show was ever coming back. So this was all that you had. Could you say we are now spoiled by having the show back, having, you know, a big finish and then having the Doctor Who magazine, which is, you know, basically, you know, being run by a state centered kind of government? Because, you know, I feel as though the criticisms that would have been in when Marvel was running Doctor Who magazines were completely are completely different to what they are now, but that is just my opinion. Um, then of course, so um, as I scroll through, you know, uh, I, I love this. Uh, this is a hysterical um, comment that I do like. And I, I do think that it is kind of snarky and it says, you know, actually I take that back before I get to that one. It says for Suze Kempner's sake, I hope she's got thicker skin than I would because of all the reactions. And I do feel bad for her because I'm going to pull up something that is just, holy cow, I I actually do feel bad for um, the actress that played Doom in this offshoot small thing. And again, we get, you know, another Time Lord Victorious. And then um, somebody said, at least Doomsday was easier to keep up with. All the parts were available digitally and there weren't too many parts to keep. What? Like, Time Lord Victorious's big fall like issues was it was all thrown together probably way too fast and things were not ready and they kept on having to push back, especially the big finish audios from time to time. So I feel as though Like, I don't know what they're talking about when it comes to certain things. And, you know, a lot of people are are excited. Oh, hey, the Eighth Doctor gets to meet Jackie because, you know, Jackie Tyler's on the cover. Jack, uh, Eighth Doctor's on the Tyler. And somebody replies, no, they're not in the same story. So it's quite funny when you think about it. And then, of course, one of my favorite comments. Oh, there we are. Hello? 